welcome back here with us on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. At 8.30 on Urban Debate, we want to discuss an issue that most women in the country have faced at least once in their life. I'm talking about the morality lectures on what women should wear and how they should conduct themselves. The reason why we are talking about this tonight is Telangana governor's remarks. You, the viewers, are the judge, whether it is acceptable or borders around outrageous. Tamilisai Sondarajan believes that women should dress decently as this is the only way to avoid unnecessary gaze and stares from men. You heard it right. These are the thoughts of the constitutional custodian in Telangana. Custodian of our holy grail which in bold provides equal rights without prejudice or any kind of bias. She is a woman and she has said this on the occasion of Women's Day. Now that's not all. She also said that while studying is the right of a woman, dressing as per her choice is not. And that clothes of women should not irk people around them. Why is it that a woman's safety is directly hinged to what she wears? If this is the base criteria for women's safety, then shouldn't there be an end to attacks on Muslim clergy which prescribes mandatory hijab? If this is the criteria, is there an answer to a question why three-year-olds are raped? Why should women be devoid of crucial elements like equality, personal freedom and choice? Isn't this quick fix solution from those in power and high place to abdicate responsibility of ensuring women's safety? And is it time now to police pedestrian thoughts instead of clothing? That's our big focus on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. Tonight, viewers, I invite you as well to uh, share your views. The numbers are flashing at the bottom of your screen. Please call us with your thoughts on what you think about the statement that has been made by the governor of uh, Telangana. Joining us on the broadcast right now is uh, Dr. Lubna uh, Sarwath, who is a social activist, Rami Desai, who is an author. We will also be joined by Karun Anandi, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. Uh, Rami Desai, I want to to first ask you why do women need to hear these kind of comments again and again when uh, you know we talk about equality um, good evening Ina. Uh, let me say this you know there's absolutely no reason that any woman should be virtue signaled by anybody I don't think it's acceptable and I don't think in this day you know, uh, any woman will accept it, irrespective of her age. Having said that, as this particular debate has started off from uh, the statements made by the Honorable Governor, I have to also say this, you know, because it's very imperative for women like us, you know, who see the emancipation of other women with utmost importance, to look at issues that crop up with a degree of context and balance. At the end of the day, you know, I feel everything is not 100% correct and everything cannot be 100% offensive. There is a midway that we have to look at ever so often. Now, as the governor said, you know, I have read her statement and at uh, one point she said, well, there has to be some sort of appropriate dressing. Yes, there has to be some sort of appropriate dressing. I think that is expected of men and women. So I think what she means by that is no, that, but you she know, did uh, not talk about men. She only spoke about women. Correct. She did but not like specify said, are... that it's for everyone that she is giving this direction. She only spoke about women. And that is the reason why I asked right. you this question. Why should women be devoid of crucial elements like equality, personal choice and freedom? I don't think I don't think uh, she's indicating or trying to, uh, you know, impress upon us that this is, uh, you know, something that only women have to do. We have to look at it in the context of where the question was asked. It was asked by a woman in a Women's Day event, and it was res uh, responded. Uh, that question was responded by the governor on that specific question as to should women wear. Uh, dresses or not, to which her reply was, yes, a woman should be appropriately dressed. Having said that, Hina, like I said, everything is not 100% correct or 100% offensive. Having said that, I, of course, uh, cannot, being a woman, okay. agree with 
with the fact that, um, you know, the, uh, she used the word regulation, that there should be some regulation. I don't think anybody can enforce any sort of regulation on, you know, what uh, a woman should wear. Having said that, I think what she meant hmm. is that one should be able to self-regulate as to what is appropriate and what isn't. And this she said in terms of safety and security. That is the reason why I asked that question. Why is it always about telling women what to wear? Is there an answer to a question why three-year-olds are raped? That is the reason why I raised those points. Uh, but you've made your point, Rami Desai. Karuna Nandi, uh, uh, Pink Floyd said that, hey, teachers, leave the kids alone. Isn't it time now to tell the social preachers, leave women alone? Truly, truly. Um, look, I think that when one is in a constitutional position, the imperative to speak in a manner that upholds those values and that doesn't have a chilling effect on the people who are listening. And when you are the governor of a state, is extremely important. So if you look at the statement, what that statement says, in the midst of saying that, with an, I don't agree with the notion of wearing dresses as for whims and fancies. And she, it's not that she's talking about the Navy or the Army or, you know, even a school. And I'll come to the school and the fact that um, there is a imperative in schools now on taking hijabs off women, which are as problematic as forcing hijabs on women, you know? So, like, placing that in one... In, in, one context, she said, I don't agree with the notion of wearing dress as per whims and fancies. We have to dress appropriately to the place as we are, and women should not dress in a way that it irks others. Now, let's unpack this a bit. What is it that others women have been entry for wearing saris? For what the learned governor frequently wears, right? We women are told not to wear jeans in college, and that has irked some other people. Women are not told not to wear hijabs in pre-college because that has irked some people. You are told not to wear skirts over, uh, you know, of a particular length. Or, I mean, frankly, when is this going to stop? But the most problematic aspect of the statement was when she said to avoid unnecessary gaze. It is necessary to dress appropriately. And according to me, this is the crux of the problem. Because when you are saying that the way somebody looks at you is your fault, is on exactly the same slope when, as saying, that somebody making a indecent comment against you was because you were wearing something. And that, according to me, is a problem. Now, in Nalsa versus the Union of India, the Supreme Court was entirely clear. And they said that it is part of our constitutional right under Article 19.1. A, hmm. to dress according to one's choice and that it is part of our freedom of expression. Absolutely. It is very clear. And I also think, just to, to finish the comment on the hijab debate, all of this, and I don't want to call it the hijab debate, I would rather call it the exclusion of young women from education based on what they wear. Um, all of this is also being saying in that context. So I don't think that we can, you know, we can sort of look at any statement in words of the context. I say this as... Um, someone who chooses to wear sort of traditional clothing, not all the time, but a significant amount of the time. I think that yes. everyone's right to free expression is significant. I think the ability to look at, um, I think uniforms can be appropriate um, in particular situations. And mm. for that to be looked at in a way that is 
why why uh, why fall short of the word feminist is important hmm interesting points you're making dr lubna how is this remark any different from what mulayam singh yadav had said earlier remember who was attacked for saying in reference to those who assaulted women ladke hai galti ho jati hai yes yeah uh, i heard the interesting points from both uh, rami and karuna and uh, the questions that you also had raised uh, see this actually reminds me of one thing you know uh that uh, and as you rightly pointed out two things i want to bring in perspective here and we all need to point her upon it because we are all concerned just give me some time and one the first point is that uh, when disha was uh, um, the disha event happened here in hyderabad and you know the telangana police conducted an encounter and all the four people were uh, killed okay the without any trial the four people were killed they were assumed it is were assumed that they were the rapists now on that what happened after that the dgp of telangana had issued a um, uh, i mean a full note of directions you know and all those directions were addressed to the girls and the women telling that let them carry a paper bottle paper spray with them let them do this let them not travel after this time. i mean it was there were so many things for all the students and all the women so we did not find any any particular notice to the men and the boys of the state telling that you guys beware this is not to be done by you won't guess you won't do this there was nothing at all to women so always it is you know when a woman faces something also then it is always the woman who is again got to be more alert and now it is not about the notebooks or the work we have to be alert about the spray uh, paper sprays and who is talking and i have to be on alert you know see what sort of a uh, thing that we are doing in this particular age now second thing what i want to tell is uh, is that uh, uh in tamil nadu three sitting ips officers what happened was at that time just a few years back and it was highlighted in almost all the media and i saw it in ndtv uh they were uh, in their uniforms they conducted a press conference uh, and they told that uh, we want the mm. film industry to produce more responsible films because and they were telling this only and only okay. in context of only and only in context of uh the uh, the more and more assaults sexual assaults that the women were facing both on the streets and in the home and in the workplace anywhere due to the increase they were telling that we want more responsible mm. films from the film producers the film producers have to hear this so this is coming from three very highly positioned ips mm. officers in the live press conference in their uniform so in the if you look at the governor's comments i mm. she is a responsible and very honorable um, woman for us because i am from telangana she is my first citizen so i have every regard for her but when she is telling that and actually you know personally i like her uh, her attire by the way i like her attire very much because she is a very traditional flower and all that she wears so i like her attire but i am telling that when she is telling this uh, the entire owners of something happened to women she has put it on the woman which i totally disagree hmm. with her same was done by the dgp of absolutely Telangana. when the disha happened but at the same time i want us all to ponder about what those hmm. three women ips probation officers told after a deep study of what they encountered when they told the uh, uh, film producers to produce responsible films so we all have to it's not just as uh, uh, rami was telling hmm. it's not just 100% this side or that side you know and as you rightly told what about those people those babies those elderly women who are being assaulted so we have to see multiple um, hmm. views that are coming up and i do not disagree i do not agree with what my governor has told but at the same time we have to we cannot forget what those responsible ips okay. told and at the same time the she told just like the dgp okay. of telangana who is again telling the women that they she okay. they're burdening women that's more your point of view dr lugna Let's also now hear what the people of this country have to say about the comment that uh, Ms. Sundarajan has made, who is the governor of uh, Telangana. We have S K Sharma from Rajouri, Jammu and Kashmir, joining us on the broadcast this evening. Mr. Sharma, thank you for calling us here on Mirror Now. What do you make of the statement of the governor? Outrageous or acceptable? Hello, Mr. Sharma. Didi, yes, can you hear me? I speak in English. जी आप किस तरह से देखते हैं जो आप तेलंगाने any language that you are comfortable with? Okay, okay, thank you. Firstly, I am myself a social worker from District of Jhori, Jammu Kashmir, UT. यहाँ के जो लोग पिछले सोलह सालों से मैं देख रहा हूँ हमारा अभियान है door to door, area to area. 
سکول ہیلو اوکے ہیلو جی بتائیے میم سکول سے جتنے بھی کالج ہیں یہاں پہ یہ سکول جو وومن جو سول سوسائٹی ہے اس کا یہ فرض ہے اور دھرم ہے سکول ایڈمنسٹریشن کا اس کو چیز کو لاگو کرے یہاں کو پولیٹیکل لیول پر میں دیکھ رہا ہوں کافی طرح کے اس کے بیچ میں سیاست ہو رہی ہے اور یہ نیگیٹیوٹی ان کے بیچ میں ڈالے ایز پر جو ہم ویسٹرن نہیں ہیں ہم ہندوستانی ہیں ہماری سویدھا سنسکرتی اور تہذیب ہے کچھ سولائزیشن ہمیں فالو کرنا چاہیے گرینڈ مدرس کو اور ان کو جو 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 ان نے دیش میں جو پاکی ان لوگوں نے بالی کچھ سمپلی سٹی کے اسکول کالج یا کیمپس وغیرہ ہے اس میں ہمارے ڈریس کے سمپل ڈریس لیونگ سمپل لیونگ ہائی تھنکنگ تو اس میں بیچ میں ہمیں اس کو فالو کر دیے سمپلی سٹی کو ہمیں ہمیں ڈریس ڈریس کی طرف دھیان نہیں ہونا چاہیے یہ بچیاں ڈیٹیل ہو رہی ہیں اور آرٹیفیشل فیشن بھی شرما جی آپ یہ تو مانتے ہیں کہ ہر ایک کو حق ہے اس دیش میں وہ پہننے کا جو وہ چاہتا ہے یا چاہتی ہے کہ آپ کو لگتا ہے لڑکیوں کے لیے تو ایک ڈریس کوڈ کی بات ہمیشہ کی جانی چاہیے لیکن لڑکوں کو کوئی نہ سکھائے کبھی بھی کہ لڑکیوں کو ریسپیکٹ فلی دیکھنا چاہیے پر بات ایسی ہے میم جو لڑکیوں کا جو دیکھو درجہ کتنا بڑا دیا گیا ہے کتنے روپ ہیں ان کے یہ اگر لڑکیاں نہ ہوتی دیش میں تو وہاں لڑکے کہاں ہوتے کہنے کا مطلب ہے ان کو ایک ماتا ہوں ان کو بڑا پردہ بڑا ہوتی ہے اور اس کا اردو اسلام میں دیکھا جائے تو اس کا مطلب ہے آپ آپ میری بات سمجھ نہیں رہے ہیں شرما جی میں نے آپ سے سمپل سوال پوچھا ہے کہ جس طرح سے آپ بات کر رہے ہیں میں آپ سے صرف یہ جاننا چاہتی ہوں کہ اس دیش میں آپ کے حساب سے سب کے پاس حق تو ہونا چاہیے اگر کوئی کچھ پہننا چاہتا ہے لڑکا کچھ پہننا چاہتا ہے یا لڑکی کچھ پہننی چاہتی ہے تو اس کو وہ حق ہونا چاہیے وہ پہن سکے یا پھر لڑکیوں کے لیے ہمیشہ ایک ڈریس کوڈ کی بات کی جائے اور لڑکوں کے لیے کوئی بھی کوئی ڈائریکشن نہ ہو کہ آپ لڑکیوں کی طرف سے ریسپیکٹ فلی دیکھیں یہ لڑکیوں کی آپ کے سر میں اچھی ہے لڑکیوں کو اتنے آزاد دیکھو اپنی پرسنل لائف میں آزاد ہو سکتی ہیں سیلیبریشن میں اسکول یعنی اپنی جو ادر ڈفرینٹ ایکٹیویٹیز میں بٹ ان کو جو اسکول کالج کا جہاں ہے نہیں ہے میں قانون ہے نا اس کو فالو کرنا چاہیے اپنی آزاد ڈفرینٹ کلر میں نہیں ہونی چاہیے یا کل کی تو آپ یہ کہنا چاہتے ہیں کہ لڑکیوں کے لیے رولز ہونے چاہیے لڑکوں کے لیے کوئی رولز نہیں ہونے چاہیے مسٹر شرما تھینک یو فار کالنگ اس یور آن میرر ناؤ کرونا نندی وانٹس ٹو کم ان You know, I think that it's very important to have clarity on this issue, right? Kanun ka koi ullanga nahi ho raha hai, agar aap raaste mein, matlab kuch bhi chahe pehne, kanun ka koi ullanga nahi ho raha hai, you know? Um, constitution, samvidhan, I mean, okay, this is an English show, the constitution is in fact very clear as interpreted that stereotypical morality is not something that can govern public life, right? That our hmm. right to intimate decision-making cannot be inhibited even by law. And there's certainly no law telling women what to wear in, um, in the context that the, the governor was speaking, right? There's also not... Um, hmm. Absolutely. You know, so I think it's very clear, to, it's very important to have clarity on this and not to imagine that we are even further behind where we are because the governor had said something and Mr. Sharma has a particular view. We are where we are. We have a right. Absolutely. Right, as interpreted by constitutional benches, over five judges, that there is a right mm. to self-expression. And that is the reason why I asked that question also earlier, Karuna, that is it time now to police pedestrian thoughts instead of clothing? Because these kind of thoughts are hurled at us again and again. Let's also hear uh, what other people have to say. We have Vijay joining us from Hyderabad this evening. Vijay, thank you for calling us here on Mirror Now. Where do you stand? How do you see the statement, the comments by uh, Telangana governor? Ma'am, I hope uh, that you will not disconnect my call and give me a platform to exercise my freedom of expression. Firstly, it's so hypocrite. It's it's such right hypocrisy. Go ahead. It's such hypocrisy. It's such hypocrisy that the same people who were supporting absolute regressive Islamic fundamentalist practice of hijab are now lecturing and teaching uh, others. The same Karuna Nandi was defending hijab on other channels. But now she has taken a U-turn, turned a whole face and 
and uh, doing propaganda against BJP. Mr. Vijay, Mr. Vijay, I, Mr. Vijay, this is not a platform where I will allow you to uh, make personal remarks against my guests or abuse my guests. I'm sorry, I'm not going to allow this. I asked you a specific question. If you have called with an agenda in mind, I'm not going to entertain that. I'm sorry. Thank you for calling us here on Mirror Now this evening. Let's go across to SS Rao from Bengaluru joining us on the broadcast this evening. Mr. Rao, thank you for calling us here on Mirror Now. What do you make of the comments by uh, the the Telangana governor acceptable in this day and age or outrageous? It is very unfortunate that the first citizen makes such a rule. Women by nature are responsible. They know what to do and what not to do. Women don't dress the way they want when they go to the temple, when they go to a birthday party and all that. Why does the government involve in the personal attack of a woman's attire? She has every right to do it. And if somebody says that uh, this is uh, this, then the men should know that they should look the ladies who dress otherwise in a party or in a club, they should know that it is that liberty that they have. The, the mind of the men is not right. They should look at it at a positive angle. Would, do, would, mm. would anybody say, pardon me? Mm. So... It is wrong. Let Absolutely. You're right, Mr. Rao. Mr. Rao, thank you very much for calling us here on Mirror Now on Urban Debate this evening and sharing with us your thoughts. So, uh, uh, Rami Desai, that's also a thought that is there in the society where, uh, you know, uh, we had just had a viewer telling us that uh, we also need to teach the men to probably uh, look at women more respectfully, allow them to also exercise their freedom of expression. Hina, there's absolutely no question about that. I think somebody has to be out of their minds to disagree with that. There has to be that sort of uh, freedom uh, to tell men exactly the same thing. Having said that, this is also a discussion between what is an ideal scenario and what is a realistic scenario. I live in Delhi. Do you think I can wear anything I want to and move around in the middle of the night? I cannot, and that is a fact. I have to self-regulate what I wear as long as the world is the way it is. And it's not limited to this country. I've lived in other countries in the world as well. I've lived in Western countries as well. I have had to regulate what I wear even there simply to keep myself safe and secure. Rami, what cannot... you're saying is very important. And I want to quickly go across to Karuna Nandi on that point. Uh, you know, when Rami said that it is important to self-regulate given the environment that we are in right now, given the way the world is right now, of course, overnight things are not going to change. Overnight, the mindset is not going to change. But that has to be self-regulation. Why should anybody be telling us what we should do and what we should not do? I think that's the exact point. The difficult choices that women are forced to make in a situation that is not only far from ideal, but is, um, it's, it's horrifying that women are meant to make these sorts of decisions in, and the context is such that women are forced to make difficult decisions. Um, a constitutional appointee saying that women must make these decisions is wrong. Because the job of a governor, I think, is to lead in, in a sort of moral, broad, constitutional way, government, you know? And therefore, to say that women should be wearing X in light of the male gaze until that male gaze changes, I don't think that is actually the right thing to say. And the fact that it is said on Women's Day, I think, is a particular problem. Governments exist in order to guarantee our freedom. If governments were doing their utmost, I'm not just saying this government, I'm saying all governments so far, to change behavior, to make sure that one's constitutional rights were protected, and then there was nothing left and people were behaving the way they were, that's one thing. We are far from that situation. Hmm. Absolutely. Dr. Lubna, I want to give you the last word. Yeah.
see i have just two three points to make here in light of of course one person whom you rightly pointed out see what i'm telling is that again and again and again a woman's attire becomes a point of debate and so many of our minutes and hours go upon that we, until recently we spent so many hours of discussion just because one uh, the some of the students wanted to come in an attire that would cover their heads and necks that also became a debatable whereas the constitution was enshrining mm. the education compulsory education as per the constitution but then the attire was seen as an obstruction to educate her so when you come from the education point of view we were doing an injustice mm. to those girls simply because they wanted a, to cover an extra cloth over their head so that again the attire of the women became a, a, a point of discussion and now again the governor is again to strengthen the women we can't tell them that it is only about uh, their attire that will uh, strengthen them will up appropriate in whatever in her way will is her dressing the most appropriate way will it strengthen all the women with the women have to be given milk properly given ex properly given proper nutrition proper education proper health a proper housing and all these instead of telling educating the men about the physiology of a girl 12 year girl how it get transformed for, for shaping itself for the motherhood shaping itself for the important duty the nature has imposed upon her and shaping for the career that her aspirational mind wants to instead right. of catering to all these things it's again about attire whether she uncovers or covers or does whatever hmm. it is it is always the wardrobe of the woman that is put to scrutiny and i object to this Hmm. That's right. What you're saying is absolutely right, uh, and I'm completely out of time. But I really appreciate uh, all of you, Dr. Lugma, uh, Dr. Lubna, uh, Karuna Nandi, and Ravi Desai. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now this evening and uh, uh, sharing with us your thoughts on this very, very sensitive and a very important issue. Because this time, these kind of comments have come from a governor. uh and who is a woman as well and this clearly uh has uh, uh, uh not gone down very well because uh, once again the diktat has come for women how they should dress what they should wear so is it time now to uh stop uh, telling women what to do and uh, telling the men to also start respecting women for the choices they make for the clothes that they wear thank you very much all of you for joining us heading into a very very short break but there's lost line up for you on the other side as well stay with us